Lucy Whiskit here with something new from AS Rock, the B450M Pro 4 motherboard, along with the Athlon 200GE processor. Why did I pick this processor, you think, with this board? Well, I'm going to tell you, and I'll give you good reasons for it. First off, this is an integrated APU with the GPU being the Vega 3, okay, the Radeon Vega 3. This is running at 3.2 gigahertz, this, this processor, okay? Remember that. So the CPU itself is 3.2 gigahertz with 5 megs of cache. Four of it is, by the way, level 3 cache, which is pretty good for an entry-level, um, you know, type of uh, processor. And uh, 35 watts total. Very low energy, low wattage. And why would you get this for? Well, for your home family PC, right? So you're doing some browsing, video streaming, photo editing, email, you're doing your presentations, your homework, office type of work, you know, stuff like that. You want to hook up a couple monitors? Sure, you can hook up up to three monitors in there. Will this support 4K video? Yes. Streaming 4K or watching 4K video? Yes, it'll support that. So pause the screen again anytime that you want to look at this. Maximum temperature that this uh, processor will support is 95 degrees Celsius, so that's very high, um, but it won't even get that high. It'll, you can run this very cool and quiet. Now, I'm not going to use the um, heat sink that it came with. I'm going to add liquid cooling on this one. I'll tell you why. Now, also, other technologies that this will support, NVMe SSDs, okay, USB 3.1 Gen 2, 4K video, DDR4, and it uses the AM4 socket. So AMD has no plans on changing that for a while. So you get yourself a cheap processor like this for anywhere from 50 to 60 dollars you pair it up with a board that has a sweet spot so a board that has the b450 chip on it is the sweet spot for me because it's almost at the enthusiast higher end level and it'll allow you to upgrade from the athlon 200 ge later to a ryzen processor for example right so save your money now wait for the prices to come down on the ryzen processor then make the jump when you're ready for ryzen and then you'll get the huge performance increase of that because the B450 chipset will allow you to do that, right? Not only that, the B450 allows you to get the Store MI feature, right? Which other chipsets, other lower end boards will not have. So you, only if you get the higher end boards and the B450 basically has that feature. And I'll make a separate video about the Store MI because it's quite interesting. Taking together your RAM, your SSD, and your regular hard drive, putting it all together to really give you a boost in loading times is really a neat little trick. Now, let's look at the ASRock B450M Pro 4 board. Okay, features, features, features. Quality too. We're looking for that, right? Quality and construction, something that's going to last. Okay, so first thing that kind of stands out to me is, okay, the ability for overclocking, great. DDR4 memory, 3200 megahertz and up, if you're into that, allowing you to um, have the uh, uh, Crossfire X is a great feature if you're looking into that as well, but I do like the 7.1 uh, channel audio. Higher end audio is really something that I look for. I want the crisp, uh, low noise. I want low leaks on those uh, capacitors. I want higher quality components in there, and that's what it's got. Not just the fact that it has a super alloy board, meaning that uh, it has a layer of two ounce of copper in there for, for the conductivity uh, and, and efficiency of the uh, energy delivery, but also um, it's made with this uh, uh, fiberglass type of uh, material on it as well. And uh, it's got DigiPower technology in there that they uh, added in there basically to uh, improve the CPU uh, voltage uh, efficiency on there, right? So later on down the line, when you go to do your Ryzen overclocking, you're going to get some really nice results. In the box, you're going to get the drivers, your SATA cable, your IO plate manual, and two screws should you decide to install an NVMe M.2 SSD. So those SSDs that are basically a, a, a nice little thin um, uh, uh, a slot that you can just slide it in there and then attach it with the one screw onto the board. You can see one right there at the bottom of the board. You can see that along with the uh, fan headers and all those other uh, clear CMOS and things like that. So you got one down there and I'll show you the other one in a second. USB ports along the bottom. RGB header also along the bottom. You got your two PCI Express um, for your graphics cards as well, and underneath that heatsink, this AS Rock heatsink, by the way, that is um, keeping your B450 chip cool. 
okay, in case you're, you're wondering what that is. The Ultra M.2 here is for another SSD, so you want to install another one in there, and again, it gives you that buffer, that extra little space to future-proof yourself for different size SSDs, right? So that's why we're calling it Ultra. Now, at the back of the board, you've got all your input-output ports, two USB regular ports with the PS2 connector. <laughs> Interesting to see that still. VGA, DVI, HDMI, you got it all there for uh, your triple monitor setup, and also your USB type A and type C, Ethernet, and your audio plug. Everything is there. Everything is there. Now, at the back of the board, right where the, your DDR is, you've got two fan headers, two headers there. That's for your CPU cooler, and that's why I'm going to be installing a CPU cooler in here to future-proof myself. You know, you can get it for about $40 to $50 right now on, uh, for a new egg for Cooler Master CPU cooler. Yes, it's a little bit overkill for a processor such as the Athlon 200 GE, but if I get that now, I'm ready to go if I want to install a Ryzen uh, processor down the road. Now, because of that, this system is running super cool, super cool and quiet, okay? I have it on defaults. Here is the UFI BIOS from ASRock, very nice, clean design, easy to read. I like the color uh, combo that they're using here, the blue, the grays, the blacks, the white, really easy to read and navigate. The uh, OC tweaker section has all the options that you need to do some overclocking again. The capabilities are there down the road. Your advanced settings allows you to turn on and off CPU and uh, chipset features, should you want to do that. And of course, you have under the tool section an RGB um, you know, the, the, the RGB header that I showed you earlier on the board, you can control the, the colors for that one if you buy um, the appropriate components that uh, make use of that, right? So, um, again, features are there. You want to be able to control the fan. You, can, you have the fan tuning option, or you can manually set the fan modes yourself. I like to set the fan modes. Sometimes they'll set them to silent mode because on a board like this, with a chip like this, you can do that, right? So why not? Why run things loud when you can run them nice and cool and quiet? And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Um, like I said, I'll be running more benchmarks, but right now I'm going to show you the temperatures, right, at full load. So right now I've got this processor running at 3.2 gigahertz. I forced it to run at 100% full guns, blazing, full load. 1.1 volts is all it needed, and um, basically... Running it at full load, it barely breaks a sweat. On those two cores, four threads, um, it's running about 40 degrees Celsius, to be honest. So again, this is on um, the ASRock B450M Pro 4 board, as you can see right there. I didn't upgrade the BIOS. This is right out of the factory, right out of the box. Running it, it's running stable. I had no issues with it crashing. I used um, uh, memory that is running at uh, 2666 uh, megahertz at CL16 time. And uh, there you can see the Vega 3 uh, graphics is basically idle because I'm only doing 2D right now. I'm just recording my screen. I'm not doing any 3D gaming yet. So uh, that's uh, basically what it's doing. It has one uh, gig of uh, memory, right? Remember, that's built in on the chip. I didn't actually buy a separate graphics card. It's built in on the same chip. So that's the savings that you're getting when you buy this chip. You can then future-proof yourself and down the road get a Ryzen processor and a graphics card and then you get a huge boost in performance but if you're not doing that for now and you just want it for your home use this is great this is this is going to do the job if you're using it for school for studying for home office look at the temperatures here on the sensor that there it's saying that it's about 25 degrees 26 degrees there about 80 degrees fahrenheit on the motherboard that's the motherboard temperature and then the CPU, okay, the actual processor is about 40 degrees Celsius, so about 100 degrees. It's not even halfway of the full capabilities of the temperature. So uh, imagine, you know, how much hotter it would be if I put a regular heat sink in there. It would be a little bit hot, hotter, but not that much. Still, it's all relative. I got the liquid cooling solution. I got a great board, right? And I've got a low energy um, power saving type of processor. So obviously, you know, the combination of all of that means lower temperatures overall in the system. Now, when we do some system benchmarks, I'm going to start off with CPU-Z, believe it or not. Now I'm running it on idle. I took it off being at full load. Okay, so it's running at idle. Um, there's the voltage. It went down to 0 0.9 volts, as you can see here. And it has a benchmark tab here at the top. And if I go into the benchmark tab at the top, I ran here the single thread benchmark and the multi thread benchmark, and it gave me two scores and it compared it 
to an AMD A10 7850K uh, processor, right? Previous generation processor, which also ran with two cores, four, two cores, four threads, and it beat it obviously. And I would hope so because this is a newer, newer chip. I would expect it to be faster on all fronts, but it wasn't. I wasn't fully convinced. I took the score and went online and compared my scores on the single thread first to other processor scores. And um, here it gives you a good sense on where this processor really fits compared to other generations, right, with other processors. So you get a good feel for how this performs when it comes to single core um, uh, type of benchmarks with the CPU Z benchmark. Now on the multi-thread uh, score, which is 969, um, it, it changes, right, because they're different performance, different test, uh, it's multi-threaded four threads, right? And it compared it to these other types of processors. So that's very interesting to see, you know, for those of you that are curious on, on where this really compares. But I took it a level further. We went to ADA64, the CPU queen, um, and it does an overall benchmark on the processor working together, of course, with the ASRock B450M Pro, right? And it really, you can tell that this board is bringing out maximum capabilities of this processor because it compared it to other four and eight core processors. Yes, some of them are previous generations, but still, remember, this is a two core entry level processor with a built-in graphics, and it's comparing it to those other processors and, 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 and beating a lot of those. So it's pretty, pretty impressive. Now looking here at the performance test 9.0, again, CPU score compared to other generation and other types of processors, I was still impressed. I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, of course, it's not going to beat eight core processors. It better not. But I mean, for 50 to 60 US dollars, you're getting a chip here that has a mix of features, a mix of capabilities. And again, for your home office, family, regular use, streaming video, doing homework, you know, stuff like that, it's good. Some very light gaming, by the way. So when it comes to 2D and 3D uh, graphic benchmarks, performance test said, well, it's okay for 2D. Compared to these other graphics cards, great for 2D, okay? But now if you're trying to push it and make some 3D graphics, well, obviously, you know, you can't expect much out of this for 3D graphics, right? So what does that mean? Can we still play games? Can we still do stuff with this when it comes to 3D? Well, sure you can. You just have to make sure that you run things on lower graphics settings. So where this put it is about a three-star rating, maybe four. And if you added a Ryzen processor in here, it would have brought it to four star, maybe even five star rating. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, PC Mark and 3D Mark work together. There's different types of benchmarks. Night Raid is the new one that has tests on integrated graphics, and again, the temperature levels there are about 40 degrees Celsius, and that's what I was looking for to see if we can push this to the max. And um, comparing it to other office PCs, it beat the score as well. So I'm really happy to see that. When we do some light gaming at 720p low graphic settings you can get about 30 um, plus frames per second which is you know what you want you want at least 30 frames per second or higher for smooth um, uh, visuals otherwise you know it's just not going to be good enough but again this is where it compares so there's some benchmarks that you can see from Final uh, Fantasy and a uh, slide here from AMD that uh, mentions a couple of other games running at 720p on different graphics settings. So great combo here between these two. Future proof yourself. Get the Athlon uh, for now with the Ryzen processor for later on this B450M Pro 4 board from ASRock, which is on sale now for $59.99, $10 rebate. So not bad at all. I'll add the link below if you're interested. And uh, comment. Let me know what you think. I'd like to thank ASRock for providing it. And again, thank you for watching.